The video review will start in a few seconds, but if you're watching this on YouTube, remember if you have a question, comment, or suggestion for me, you can post it on 3dgameman.com and the link is provided below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds from 3dgameman.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the EVGA 500B 500 watt power supply. A great looking box that has lots of features and specifications about the product on it, as well as pictures. There is one security seal, let me cut that and let's see what's inside. Included Included is a user's manual, power cord, four black screws, and the power supply, which is wrapped in this bag to protect it. Now let's have a closer look at the power supply. EVGA is really known for their Supernova line of power supplies, but the 500 watt 500B isn't part of this line and stands by itself as a more affordable, lower wattage power supply option. Now how is this wattage determined? Well, to understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Now in this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 120 watts and the 12 volt is 400 and 80 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards, and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. It's also important to know the peak amps on each rail, and you can find that information on the side of the power supply. It's also on the box, and of course, it would be on their website or reseller's site. The amps on this one, 3.3 volt rail is 24 amps. The plus five volt rail is 20 amps. And it has a single plus 12 volt rail, which is 40 amps. Now there are a number of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. And these you really want to know before purchasing it because otherwise you could purchase a power supply that you're not going to be happy with. The first is wattage. You need to determine how much wattage you're going to require by the amount of hardware that you will be installing. Now, generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. So this would be a power supply that would be perfect for that. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficiency at typical load, and this power supply's efficiency is 85%. At typical load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC, APFC, or active power factor correction assist the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD Plus, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire. Now, many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications, and this power supply meets the 80 plus bronze certification. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors. Now this power supply doesn't have Japanese capacitors, which isn't surprising considering it's a low cost option. Now finally get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside of the case. Also, it's important to get a power supply with an excellent warranty, and this power supply comes with a three-year warranty. It has this black paint finish, and the housing is steel. They include a quiet 120 millimeter fan. Take a look at this fan grill. It is very different. So along with this fan and the many ventilation holes, well, this power supply will have no problem keeping itself cool in almost any environment. Here's the power cable connection and the power switch. 
Now this power supply isn't modular and that's a cost saving measure. Most modular power supplies will cost more than their non-modular counterparts. Now this particular power supply does have plenty of leads for a 500 watt power supply but personally I prefer power supplies that are modular because you only need to use the leads required for your particular setup. This reduces the cable mess inside of the case and it will also increase airflow inside of the case. Now this power supply might not be modular but they've done a fantastic sleeving job here and they have sleeving on all of the leads. Finally have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan. Now this power supply is really intended for a budget or value build, but never cheap out on a power supply. Now this power supply is affordable, but it's backed by a reputable brand name company, EVGA. So if something goes wrong within that warranty period, you are covered. Also, it is 80 plus bronze certified as well, comes with a nice fan. The overall styling on this is quite beautiful as well. I love this fan grill here at the top. Overall, all things considered, this is a great product. Until next time, take care. I hope you enjoyed this video review and please note that pricing for this product is available on the 3D Game Man video review page.